Hello everyone, Moritz here and today we will unbox the TechLife P50 portable power station, so let's get started. First of all, I will need to get rid of the outer packaging the power station was shipped in. This specific model, the P50, features a 500Wh 12V lithium-ion battery, a 300W inverter as well as some other outputs and inputs, but more on that later. On the carton we can see the brand and name as well as a picture of it. The P50 is a common portable power station which is sold by many different brands, but the design, function and model number is always the same. What I think is interesting is that it seems that these are all made by Orki, which in my opinion is quite a good brand. A quick look at the packaging also shows that it was made by Orki. Without further ado, let's turn the box around and open it up. First, we will get greeted by the usual manual, guarantee card and advertisement. But we are not interested in that, are we? Next, we will find a box with a few goodies. We will take a look at soon. Then, behind some more packaging, we will find the actual power station. As you can see, the manufacturer really made sure that we don't forget his name. By the way, this video is not sponsored by TechLife, but if TechLife is watching, do you want to be my sponsor? And here we have the P50 power station. Let's get the carton out of the way, remove the foil, and we will have a closer look at the accessories first. Sorry. In the accessories box we will find all the adapters needed for charging the power station and for getting power out of it. There's a charger for the car, a USB Type-C cable for charging your phone or laptop or even powering a soldering iron using Brian Loke's Flex C friend on the go, an MC4 connector for charging it with a solar panel and a big power brick for charging it from the wall. And that's it with the included accessories. Let's get back to the power station itself. On the front we will find all the outputs and status display. In the top left is the big power button which will turn the unit on and off. To the right of the display are two 12V 3M 5.5 by 2.1mm barrel jacks and next to that is a single 12V 10M car cigarette port. These as well as the USB are turned on and off by pressing the DC button. Then on the bottom left we will find a single USB-C 45W power delivery 2.0 port as well as four USB-A 5V 3M BC 1.2 ports. Next is the 230V AC output, which is turned on and off by the AC button. Here we'll find two outlets with a total of 300W and a peak power of 450W, but we will test these later. On the top is a QI 1.2.4 wireless charger, which can output up to 10W, and two foldable handles for carrying the power station, which weighs around 62 kilograms. On the left side, is a vent with a fan to cool the unit. On the back a light, which is quite bright and has three modes, a bright mode, a dim mode and an SOS mode. Built right into the light diffuser is also the charging port of the power station, which supports 12 to 40 volts and up to 120 watts of power and this is also where all the included charging cables will hook up to. On the right side there is an exhaust vent. And on the bottom are four rubber feet and some information about the unit. Next we are going to test whether the built-in inverter really generates a pure sine wave as well as load tested with a 2000 watt hairdryer. I have hooked up an oscilloscope so we can see the generated sine wave, so let's turn it on. As you can see we get a nice pure sine wave which is not chopped up. Which means whatever load you are going to connect to this thing will work because some devices will have issues when supplied with a non-pure sine wave which is not the case here. Next, let's test if we can power a 2000 watt hair dryer on low settings as well as if the unit will turn off when overpowered. As you can see, on the first fan speed and the second heating setting, the hair dryer will use around 320 watts, which works just fine. Once I switch to the second fan speed, the inverter directly goes into protection and shuts off. 
To reset the inverter, you just have to turn it off and on again, as with many devices. Let's try to set the heater to the first setting and the fan to the second speed. Now the hairdryer will use around 400 watts, which surprisingly the inverter can deliver for up to 120 seconds. But note that running a device at around 300 watts will drain the power station after around one and a half hours. Alright, now we are going to try out the USB ports and already wrap up this unboxing. Hooking up a Xiaomi Mi A1 to the USB-C port works just fine. I mean, what did you expect to happen? But you can also hook up an IKEA Windrichtning particle sensor to check whether the air quality in your tent or wherever you are is good. Also stay tuned as I will upload a new video about this particle sensor soon and how you can convert it and hook it up to Home Assistant and MQTT. Yeah, and that's the TechLife P50 Portable Power Station unboxing. You can find the current price and more information about it in the description. If you are interested, I might make another video about this product and review it. So let me know in the comments what I should talk about and what you would like to see. Also, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up, share and subscribe. Until the next one, bye!